welcome to the first video in the series of the basics of simultaneous interpreting. My name is Matt. That's not important. What's important is what I can tell you. I uh, want to tell you about myself. I was trained in interpreting. I have a bachelor's and a master's in Spanish language with uh, Spanish translation and interpreting as my emphasis. I was trained primarily at Brigham Young University in Utah in the United States and also at the Monterey Institute of International Studies in California. I have uh, many hours in the booth with the microphone on doing simultaneous interpreting for conferences. I've been trained in sight translation and consecutive interpreting as well, but that's not what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the work, uh, the art, the science of interpreting in a simultaneous way. And we're going to talk about the equipment, the setting, those sorts of things that you need to know. Those are going to come way down the line, maybe after the tenth video. And what I'm going to attempt to do each time as well is give you at least one practicum, one thing to do to improve your ability as an interpreter. And we'll get to that toward the end of this video. I want to keep every one of them between three and five minutes or so. Uh, they will all be in English so that I can do this fluidly. As I've said to my colleagues here who are behind the camera, if you don't understand me when I'm instructing you in English, you can't interpret in English. Uh, we will probably have to do this in other languages. I'm fluent in Spanish. I'm more or less in French and uh, bits and pieces of others. But if we have to, we'll do some training videos in other languages so that you can move between those languages and yet others. Uh, one of the most fascinating interpreters I ever knew was uh, fascinating because he was able to go from German to Japanese and back again. And uh, the only one I ever knew of. Well, what I want to do now uh, is go straight into the first practice. My friends here, oh, I'm speaking to you from a room off my house in... Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. I'm assigned here as a diplomat. I'm doing this because I think more people ought to know the art and skill of interpreting. Uh, I talked to these friends of mine here and I said, well, how do you say parrot? Because while I know a lot of friends, that's one I don't know. And even though I've heard it five times, I still can't say parrot. Okay. The art of being a parrot or parroting is part of the first uh, elements of preparing to be an interpreter. And it is, and I leave it to you to do this practice, that you repeat what you hear. Radio, television, whatever it is, have someone read to you. But as I've shown to my friends here just today, the difficulty of having someone read to you so that you can pair it is, A, it takes up their time and they have to be ready to train you. And B, they become fascinated or distracted by what you're saying and can't continue reading. So I suggest that television and radio are very good ways to sit and begin to parrot. Repeat what you hear. Practice uh, deliberately finding people who speak fast, people who speak while crying. Men interpreting for women, women interpreting for men. Yes, I have had to say to the microphone, I have been pregnant, and things of that kind. I have had to interpret while emotional women were speaking and do everything in the feminine form. You, as an interpreter, will have to do those things as well, and you have to be prepared to do it. Uh, if you hear noises in the background, the family's running around, pay no attention to them. All right, so parroting. Let me just start by saying that, and that you should do it before you see video too, which will come along soon. Now, having done that, let me talk to you about the series. We're just making the first one now. We're planning quite a few. We'll talk about the equipment, the settings, the instructions you have to give, the things that you can demand of your clients. We'll talk somewhat about the prices that you can charge, uh, institutions where you can go to be certified, because uh, a good client will ask to see your certification, your credentials, and um, experience will not only go so far. So we'll get to all those things, and we will, as I said, you do more and more practices until you come to that magic moment when you feel, yes, I can do this thing. And that, that's it for video one. Thanks for being with us. 
Watch for more videos under this same title and from this same outfit, Ellsworth Research. And uh, we'll just march ahead from here. Thank you and goodbye.